You're here, I'm queer, get used to it, and welcome back to my channel. We are diving into another villain for today's video, and that is Amber McLean. If you are oddly unfamiliar with Amber, she is a ghost from Danny Phantom. Amber is one of my favorite ghosts, so why not revive some of that ghostly punk rock vibes for this Halloween season? I wanted to stay true to the character design, but add some flair here and there. I gave her more details, accessories, and of course, attitude. So with all that being said, let's get this show started. Today's victim is going to be a Monster High Ghoulia. She has a real grey skin tone like Amber, and she also has one of my favorite head sculpts. Amber has teal hair, so let's go and remove Ghoulia's hair. As always, this part is so messy. But in the end, it's very satisfying. I mean, it's so gross. It's just a bunch of gunk, glue, and hair, and it's, I mean, it's just all fun to play with. After that, I also removed the factory paint so we have a clean canvas to work with. Look at that beautiful sculpt. It is definitely very, very nice. It's like my favorite. As always, I am using acrylic yarn to reroute her hair. And at first I wanted to actually set it on fire since Amber has flames for her ponytail. You guys know that the Hades doll I made, um, I set him on fire. Like I literally gave him real flames for his hair. Um, that's not gonna work this time. I always try out the experiments before working on the dolls, and let's just say it will be too dangerous to do in the studio. I tried it out with one yarn weft, and it already created a huge flame. Um, so just imagine if it was a big chunk of ponytail, it would literally be a torch, like literally. And it was also dripping on the ground, which is just all in a bad sign with my paper backdrop. It would have been a really cool concept, but I will reserve it for a short-haired character. So now let me take this yarn piece by piece and reroute the perimeter of the head. Now that we have the perimeter rerouted, let's secure it with Fabri-Tac. Make sure you get all the yarn coated inside, and this roughly takes me two days to completely dry, but it all depends on the weather you're in. After it's secured, I'm taking my pet brush to brush it out. I'm a bit more careful on rerouted yarn, so I don't accidentally pull out the yarn, because it can still be pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> then when we achieve the troll look, let's take out our hair straightener to straighten the yarn. And now we have this shiny straight hair. Let's wrap her up and prep her with Mr. Super Clear. As always, I take a light pencil to sketch out the features I would like her to have and make sure things like symmetry and aesthetics are up to par. I definitely gave her a more seductive look and I just couldn't help it. Gulia's mold is way too good. I'm also pre-poking her lips and brows so we can add piercings to them later. This is still the first layer, but I am adding as much color as I can before the pencils stop applying.
and I'm also defining her face with chalk pastels. Now I just spray her face throughout the face of process to save the progress. I don't know about you guys, but Amber's song, Remember, is not just catchy, but it's actually her story before she died. I will make sure to link it down below. Um, it's actually very sad, like I said, when you listen to the lyrics, so listen to it. It's really nice. It's really catchy. My main idea is to really give her a dramatic smoky eye, and I'm sure those who's been around my channel are not surprised. The smoky eye really highlights her eye and makes her pupils stand out, almost like it's being highlighted. I just said that. Almost like it's glowing, let's say that. <laughs> I'm also giving her a fierce wing liner. I know it's hard to see, but it's there, trust me. Now I'm just adding some extra touches to her eyes. If you guys watched Danny Phantom, who was your favorite character from the show? Mine was definitely... You know what? Let me list it. Sam Manson, obviously because she was gothic and she was voiced by Grey Delisle. Danny Phantom, Amber, Vlad, Paulina. Ah, favorite characters. So fun. Moving down for a bit, I wanted to add some tattoos to give her more character. These are all references from her song. The broken heart is obviously self-explanatory. The, the sept for September is roughly when she fell in love and also died. The flames I thought would just be a cool touch and a pop of color. Since some parts of her body will show, I actually decided to give it some body blushing while we're at it. You know, why not? Now let's add the lashes. I met someone before who asked me how I apply lashes so easily. And let me tell y'all, it's not. Here is the unedited raw footage. I mean, it's slightly sped up. Process of the mess when I apply the lashes. You definitely need to have a steady hand and be able to pose the lashes while the glue is drying. You have to keep it up pretty much. If the glue gets on the actual eye or the face, you have to remove it before it dries, or else it's just gonna be another type of mess. Um, all in all, it's a mess. I can't even look at this. Um, so let's go back to the edited magic of the eyelash application. I let the glue dry on the lashes before actually trimming it. And then I apply the gloss on her lips. And now we are done with her face up and here is a before and after of Gulia and Amber. I am so in love! It's so nice, it's very fierce, it's literally like... She's mad, like, she's not here to play, you know what I mean? Hmm, I'm into it. Now let's move on to her clothes. As always, this punk fantasy was made possible by Deluxe Designs. Make sure you guys give her some love because she is so amazing. You guys have seen all of her work through my 
my videos, um, and they're just top notch. I requested these to be plain and clean because I am quite picky with how I like to add certain details, like rips and tears. So yeah, I requested an asymmetrical long sleeve mesh top and also a short sleeve top with some low waisted patent leather pants. Obviously they're not real leather. Now I'm gonna go ahead and distress the sleeveless top. And the same goes for the pants. I wanted this to have a Catwoman Michelle Pfeiffer look to it. That's definitely the inspiration. And I'm just into it. I love the white threads on it. So I gave her the white threads to give some highlight. Now let's make her studded belt. I'm using these micro nail art spikes and I'm gluing it onto a fake leather belt. Then after it dries, I paint it silver. To make her gloves, I take this patent pleather and I sew it with the good sides facing in. It's almost like a tube. I then paint her right hand glossy black. For her boots, I am using Elizabeth's boots as a base. Despite the bows, they have the potential to be a really cool punk boots. So obviously the bows gotta go, and I use an X-Acto knife to slice them off one by one. And y'all need to be careful, do not slice going in, um, always sliced going out, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I take the same leather I use for a belt and I cut multiple strips to give the boots the buckled look. I then just use super glue to adhere it onto all of the bows pretty much, so I believe there were six pieces per boot. Then I just trim them, leaving a bit to hang off. Now I paint the whole boots pale silver. After that, I dry brush it with gunmetal gray. Now let's add the buckle piece, and these are also made of pleather. I painted the same way, but I also painted the buckle detail. The key thing when you are trying to recreate a three-dimensional look is to layer it and create artificial shadows, artificial highlights, and all of that just to have it look like it is 3D and that it is a real buckle. I would have used real buckles like craft buckles, but I could not find the right sizes for some reason. I've tried all of the craft stores and I just couldn't find it. The bottoms will not be red this time, I'm sorry, House of Hex, but I thought a cool teal would do the job. I also added a stylized skull to the front of her soles. 
And now we are done with her sickening boots, and I think it is so cool looking. It actually has an armor appear to it, oddly enough. That's really cool. Now let's move on to her weapon, I mean, her electric guitar. I first sketch it out to get the sizing and the design correctly. Then I trace it onto Warbler. Y'all love it, I love it. And here are all of our pieces that we need to assemble our electric guitar. I use a combination of glue gun, super glue, to keep everything secured. I know that Warbla, um, when heated, actually adheres to itself, but I am not taking that chance. Um, yeah. I do heat up the Warbla, of course, to make it malleable, but in order to secure it, girl, she's gonna be super glued. After it's built, I draw the flame design in the front to give me a better idea of its placement. Then I take my glue gun and I use it to create a 3D flame look. To create the fret wires, I heat up the neck of the guitar and I use my X-Acto to create the divots. I also glue some beads for her power knobs. Now let's go have some fun with color. I pretty much followed Amber's original color story with a few modified shades. Growing up, my grandmother wanted me to learn the piano, the guitar, the violin. I feel like that's just probably an Asian thing, like they want us all to be our own freaking orchestra, like all in one. Um, unfortunately, I did kind of learn piano, but I mean, it's not too late. I can still learn guitar. It's really cool, you know? And I am very aware that I actually took out the power logos on her guitar. I don't know, for some reason I thought it would look better without them, like it would look less kitschy. I mean, I guess that is the point of a cartoon character, is to have that kitsch. But I don't know, I liked it without it, so here we are! <laughs> I layered the flames with different colors of blue, teals, some silvers, some pearlescent colors here and there, just so that it gives it more dimension. To make the entire guitar shiny, I used the glossy Mod Podge. For the strings, I take this fishing line and I glue it on the neck to the body of the guitar. Then I finish it up with some added details. And now we are done with her guitar. Gulia came with these zipper earrings and I thought they looked cool enough to also belong to Amber. So why not? I just painted it purple to match her lips and I dry brushed it metallic silver.
And I think that sums up everything we need. So let's go ahead and dress her up. Since her ponytail was a bit sad looking, I made additional wefts and I'm just going to go ahead and glue that onto her ponytail. I then wrap it all up with a black pleather band. <laughs> 